Lord, and at last, when life's work here is through, don't spend your money for flowers, just a rose will do, just have an old-fashioned preacher preach a sermon so true. Don't spend your money for flowers. Just a rose will do. For I go to a beautiful garden. At last, when life's work here is through. Don't spend your money for flowers, just a rose will do. In the book of Job, the Old Testament, the book of Job. I want to use as a, as a subject tonight a verse from the book of Revelation and preach from the book of Job about Job. Amazing story there. If you've never read the book of Job, you ought to read it. Even, even philosophers and scientists or people who are not saved recognize, a lot of them don't even believe the Bible, but they recognize the book of Job as a, one of the great literary masterpieces of the world. And uh, could be the oldest book in the Bible. Very well could be the oldest book in the Bible, written before any of the other books. Uh, and they base that on the references and the things that happened in the book of Job. And uh, also that in 42 chapters, there's no mention to the law. Mention, uh, and of all that conversation about doing right and sinning, not one mention of the law. And probably written before God gave Moses the law. And uh, so... We're reading an old book here tonight, one of the 60 books in the Bible, the book of Job. We're going to try to bring you a message on a, book in Re- on a verse in the book of Revelation that says, Be thou faithful unto death. That ought to be the heart's desire of every Christian tonight, to be faithful to God. You may not be able to sing, you may not be able to preach, you may not be able to teach, but there's one thing that everybody in this house can do. You can be faithful. Every one of us. You don't have to have a talent to do that. Uh, you you got to have uh, something inside that the average man don't have. And that's the Lord and the power of God. You can't do it on your own, but you can be faithful. Now, we're going to read the first verse of the book of Job, chapter 1, and then tell you a story of the book of Job tonight by the help of the Lord. I want you to pray for us, and I want you kids to be still. And be quiet and don't want anybody moving around or any unnecessary uh, moving around or talking during reaching. Job chapter 1, verse 1. There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job. And that man was perfect and upright, one that feared God and eschewed evil and hated evil. And there were born to him seven sons and three daughters. His substance also was 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, 500 she-asses, and a very great household, so that this man was the greatest of all the men of the east. I want to stop reading right there tonight, and I want to tell you the rest of the story as we bring the message, and speak to you on this thought, be thou faithful unto death. Let's bow our heads while we pray. Our Father, we thank you, Lord, for this privilege an opportunity that we have to bow in Your presence and call You our Father. Realizing that there was a time in our life when we didn't know You. We were outside and, Lord, strangers and having no hope without God in this world. We're so glad, Lord, that we which were sometime far off are now made nigh by the blood of Christ. We're so glad that the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. 
We're so glad to know tonight, Father, that you've taken it upon you. Lord, you give your son for us while we were yet in our sin to die for us. We thank you, Lord, for the plan, the man of salvation. We thank you, Father, for a privilege to come to church. We thank you, Lord, for our Bibles that we have to read. Thank you for brothers and sisters. God, we thank you for America, the country that we have to live in, where we can freely stand up, speak, and preach and teach the Word of the Lord. Now we pray, our Father, that the message here tonight will go deep into the hearts of every Christian. And Lord, they'd make up their mind to be faithful unto death. And Lord, whatever you do for us, we'll praise you and thank you for it. In Jesus' blessed name we pray, and for his sake, amen. I want to talk to you a little while tonight on that verse in the book of Revelation, Be thou faithful unto death. Now, of course, Job was in that was faithful to God. Now, I, I began to think about this, and I thought about, you know, a lot of people think that just because they don't have some great talent, that they can't be used of God. We're living in a time when people think God's a talent scout. And you'll be a great football player or a converted drug addict, or you got to be some kind of movie star before anybody will listen to you. But I want to say tonight that that's not true, that, that people will listen to a dedicated Christian. People will watch and admire and listen and even follow a man who is faithful. I heard about a church in a certain town that was wanting to cut out their Wednesday night services. And they said, well, all the other churches are doing it. We're just going to quit having service on Wednesday night. And a lot of people agreed to it, except one lady, and she said, no, I believe the Lord wants us to come pray on Wednesday night, and I'm going to be here. Well, they waited until Wednesday night, and she came and brought her Bible and came into the church and sat down and prayed for a little while. She's the only woman there. And the next day, one of the other ladies saw her, and they said, did you have a good time at prayer meeting last night? And they'd already heard there wasn't nobody there but her. And she said, oh, yes, we had a wonderful time. She said, what do you mean, we? There wasn't nobody there but you. She said, yeah, there were four of us. They, she, she said, there wasn't but one there. And she said, no, there's four of us. Me, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And we, had, we all prayed and had a good time. And, you know, y'all just missed out on it. But that one woman being faithful was an inspiration and a, and, a, and, a, and a guide and a light to those who were going in the wrong direction. Now, Job was a man like this. We're going to take the book of Job. And try to preach to you 42 chapters. I don't know if we'll get it done. 40 chapters of the book of Job. Seriously speaking, you'll be home in time to go to work in the morning. But I'm going to talk uh, just briefly. Just hit the spots in the book of Job. And we'll see a lesson on being faithful to God. Now, like I said a minute ago, you may not be able to play a piano. You may not be able to carry a tune, brother, in a, in a bucket. You may not be able to play a radio. But, brother, you can be faithful. You can be faithful. You may not have the voice of an angel. You may not have the uh, oratory of the literary uh, oration of a Spurgeon or a Moody, but you can be faithful to the Lord. Now let's look at this man by the name of Job. That's J-O-B. Looks like Job, but it's pronounced Job. J-O-B in your Bible. Now the Bible said about this man, there was a man in the land of Uz. I don't know where that was, but it was the land of Uz, long way off, whose name was Job, a man that was perfect and upright. Now, of course, when the Bible talks about Job being perfect, it doesn't mean sinless perfection. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But it does mean that in Job's heart, he was perfect toward his God. And he was upright, and he feared God and hated that which was evil. And there, he had seven sons and three daughters. Now, I want you to get your picture of your mind this uh, right now. Quickly, a man named Job. I want you to just let your mind go back, way back to the Middle East over yonder, thousands of years ago, and look at the greatest man of the East. He was greater than all the other men in that part of the country because God had blessed Job. Now, he was rich, and that's unusual to find a rich person that loves the Lord and trusts God and is faithful to Him. But anyway, Job was just such a man. Let me tell you a little bit, just as by way of introduction, that Job was faithful in his blessings. Job was faithful in his blessings. Do you know, while God had blessed Job, 
And while Job had more than any other man in the community, he was still faithful to God. A lot of times people, I hear Christians say, wonder how come I can't never get ahead. Wonder how come I'm always behind on my bills. Wonder how come I just can't never have any money. Well, I usually tell them this. You've got about all God can trust you with. And you've got about what if God trusts you with anymore, He'll probably give you more. The problem is most people, when they do start prospering, and they do get extra money, and they do get ahead, and they do get a lot of material things, they forget God, forget the church, forget the Bible, forget their knees, forget their prayer closet, and of course, uh, they're no longer any of use to God. But Job was faithful even in his blessing. When he was rich, he was the greatest of all the men of the East. Now notice what this boy had. He had him of ten kids, seven sons, three daughters. Keep that in mind. And then the Bible, it'd take a lot to keep that many kids up, brother. I mean, you'd have to be making them pretty good money to keep up seven sons and three daughters. Special school, they had to have clothes, and they done all these things, he had to have money. But I want you to notice what else Job, Job had. The Bible said that Job had 7,000 sheep. 7,000 sheep. Now I got to thinking about that. And I thought, man, that's, that's pretty many sheep. I mean, you could probably, have you ever seen a sheep? They're big old woolly, hairy looking things, and they're dirty, and they're standing right out in a full grown sheep, about as long as from me to Dale. Great, big old round, fat uh, wool all over them. And if you packed them in here right side by side, you might get three or four hundred sheep in this building. I mean, just all over this whole room. But now those sheep had to have room to run around and graze. That means that he didn't just have 300 like you could put in here, but he had 500, 600, 700, 800, up to 1,000, and then on to 7,000 sheep. 7,000 sheep. What would a man do? What would a man want with 7,000 sheep? I don't know. I don't know what he run with them. I don't know what he done with them. I'd hate to have to feed them. I know they probably don't eat much, but I wouldn't want... I mean, 7,000 sheep, brother, he was well off. But not only that, he had 3,000 camels. 3,000 camels! Now, a camel in those days was about like us having a Rolls Royce. Or a Cadillac. Just everybody didn't have a camel. Some of them rode donkeys. Some of them walked. But if you were well to do, you had your big camel to drive. <laughs> with air conditioning. And an extra spare tank to get gas mileage when you're going across one of those deserts, brother. Them things could walk for a long way without ever filling up. And my brother, when they did fill up, they'd drink enough water. I know if you could put it in this pulpit, if it was a big bucket, the water that a camel would drink. Where Job got the feed to, to feed 3,000 camels, I don't know. I, I'd say that Job had a special pasture off for these camels. Way off. Can you imagine how much, what, how much seven, or uh, 3,000 camels would stink? Have you ever been to the zoo? Have you ever been up and seen a camel? Brother, I mean, if you get near them, they'll spit on you. They're nasty. And they stink, smell bad. They smell like somebody ain't washed their socks in about two years. I remember when we used to play basketball, bro, we had these boys, they wore the same socks the whole season. When they'd start them things out, they'd be real nice and white and clean. They'd go out there and sweat in them about two hours. And then when the practice was over, they'd take them off. Next day, they'd put them in their basket, unlock the door, put the very same one again. I believe some of them went the whole season without ever washing them socks because for two reasons. First of all, uh, the smell would knock you down when you walked in the bathroom door where them guys had their shoes off. And second of all, by the time the end of the year, the socks, they wasn't limber. They was just like a cast. And as hard as a rock, then just slip and fit right on those shoes, those feet. And it had a terrible odor. But 3,000 camels, brother, would run you out of Maine. I don't know where he was, had those 3,000 camels, but the Bible says that he had them. 3,000 camels. Don't know what he wanted with them. But anyway, he had them. And then the Bible says that he had 500 yoke of oxen. 
I said, that'd be a lot of money in itself. Has anybody in here got 500 yoke of oxen? I mean, great big uh, western type oxen steers. Job had them, 500 yoke of them. And he had to feed them every day. Can you imagine the servants that he had working for him to feed all of this livestock? And then the Bible said he had uh, 500 she-asses. 500 little donkeys out running around in the pasture. Hee-haw, hee-haw. All 500 of them. He had to keep them away from his house, no doubt. 500 donkeys. And then the Bible said that he had an ice is a living quarters and all where he had his seven sons and his three daughters. And there's no doubt about it. God had blessed this man. God had blessed Job. No doubt about it. But you know what Job did? Every day of his life, every day when Job was living, he found his place out under somewhere, got down on his knees and worshipped God and hated sin. And he worshipped God every day. He even prayed for his seven sons and three daughters every day just in case they had sinned. Job prayed that God would have mercy on them. And Job was faithful in his blessings. You know, most people it takes hard times to bring them to God. They don't think about God when they're doing good. But I want you to know a real faithful man will be faithful when God's blessing him and when things are going good and when the bills are paid and the money's coming in. And brother, he'll be faithful as Joe was. But I want you to notice what happened in this story. One day, the Bible says that the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan came also among them. And the devil came up there before God one day. And the devil come up by bragging, saying, Ha ha, I got everybody down there serving me. Everybody loves me down there in the world, God. There ain't many of them loves you. And the Lord looked back at him and he said, Have you thought about my servant Job? That there's none like him in the earth? There's a man right down there that serves me. And the devil says, well, good night. No wonder Job serves you. Anybody would serve you. Look how you've blessed him. He, you, he's got anything he wants. He's got camels and sheep and oxen and all of these things. Seven sons and three daughters. And Job's the richest in all the country. There ain't no wonder he serves you. But just put forth your hand now and, and uh, take some of these things away from him. And Job will curse you to your face, God. And God said, all right, you go right ahead. And you take what he's got. And take away what Joe got, and we'll just see. And the devil says, okay, here. And the Lord grabbed him by the neck and said, whoa, wait just a minute, boy. Don't touch his flesh. And the devil went from the presence of the Lord. And you know the story. Job was faithful in his blessings. But we see second tonight, he was faithful in his bankruptcy. All of a sudden, Job went bankrupt. 24 hours. He didn't have a thing. You know what happened? There was a day. There came a day. There always comes that day. And there came a day when all of a sudden there's a messenger come running in and he come beating on the door. They said, come in. He come running in and said, Mr. Job, Mr. Job, Mr. Job. And Job said, yes, sir. What do you need, sir? And he said, sir, we got terrible news. He said, the, on, uh, the oxen and, and the she-asses and the donkeys were out in the field of feeding. And the Sabians, we, mean, wicked people from across town, the other side of the country, the Sabians came and fell upon them. And killed them all and took them off and killed all the servants. And I'm the only one left to tell you about it. And Job said, and before he could say anything, another servant come running in. Mr. Job, Mr. Job, Mr. Job, Mr. Job, Mr. Job. And he said, yes, sir, what can I do for you? He said, I've got terrible news. All of a sudden, we was out there keeping the sheep in the field like we're supposed to. And fire came down out of heaven and burned up the sheep. And took them all away and killed the servants. And I'm the only one left to tell you about it. Before he could get through speaking, another man came running in. Mr. Job! Mr. Job! Mr. Job! Won't you? Uh, terrible news! Terrible news! And Job said, what's the matter? And he said, we was out there watching the camels. All your 3,000 camels. And the Chaldeans came and took them all captive and stole them and killed all the servants. And I'm the only one that got away alive. And I'm the last one to tell you. Job hung his head. 
He was faithful in his bankruptcy. But then I want you to know also he's faithful in bereavement. He was faithful in his bereavement because no sooner had that last man got the words out of his mouth than another came and knocked on the door. He had tears in his eyes and said, Mr. Job, Mr. Job, Mr. Job, something terrible has happened. And Job said, what's the matter? He said, I hate to tell you this, Mr. Job, but your sons and your daughters were in the eldest brother's house and they were eating and drinking. And all of a sudden a storm came and the wind blew and knocked the house down and fell on them and killed them all. I'm the only one left to tell you about it. Now you think about what Job had to face. He lost his camel, his sheep, his oxen. He lost his donkeys. He lost his seven sons and his three daughters. Brother, I want you to know he lost, he lost everything but his wife and I wouldn't doubt what he'd been better off without her. Job lost Everything that he had, he went bankrupt one day. How many of us, if God bankrupted us and the devil turned loose on us and took everything we had and the devil said they'll curse you to face? I know a lot of Christians that would probably curse. But you know what happened? I've heard of people have two kids get killed in a car wreck and have a double funeral. Have one little coffin over here and another little coffin over here. And have a funeral for them two kids both at the same time. But I ain't never heard of nobody losing ten kids all at once and lining up ten coffins across the front of the church. That's what Job had to do. Their lady's first son, their lady's second son, their lady's third son, his fourth son, his fifth son, his sixth son, his seventh son, his oldest boy. Then across here, lady's three daughters. Job stood there at the funeral that day. The devil told God Job would curse him. And you know what? Job's faithful in his bereavement. You never know what how you're going to act when something like that happens to you. You don't never know. I've heard a lot of people say, oh, I'd just be faithful right on. You better watch your mouth. You don't know what you might do when trouble comes your way. You don't know what you might do. I'll tell you something. You don't know what you'll do anyway. Don't never say, I'll do this or I'll do that or I'd never do this or I'd never do that. That'll probably be the thing you'll wind up doing. You know what Job did? He looked down there, brother, with tears streaming down his face, and he saw his kids there that he watched grow up. He knew, he knew that he'd lost all his camels and his sheep and his oxen and everything, and the devil over there just a jumping up and down like this, a jumping up and down, hiding behind something over there in the church watching old Job, and he said, he's going to God, he's going to cuss God, he's going to cuss God. I just know he's going to cuss God. And Job looked down, the Bible said, and saw all of his children laying there across the that, uh, place that day and he buried ten of them that day and the devil said he's going to cuss God and by the time Job looked up to heaven and the devil said here it comes here it comes here it comes here it comes and old Job made that famous statement naked came forth I forth out of my mother's womb and naked I'm going back he said when I bought into the I didn't have nothing when I leave I ain't going to have nothing the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away blessed be the name of the Lord. And the Bible said that Job stayed faithful even in his bereavement. Now I wonder if God put His hand down on you and touched your life like that. Would you stay faithful to Him? Job didn't have the Holy Ghost living inside of him like me and you got. Job didn't have the New Testament in the book of Psalms to look down and read and get comfort from. But he stayed faithful in his bereavement. And that's not all. That's not all. Job stayed faithful in boils. You know what happened after that? Another day came when the devil got up to talk to God. And the devil went to speak to God. He said, everybody down there is living for me. Everybody down in the world is serving me. And God said, where'd you come from? And he said, from running to and fro on the earth. You know, there's a lot of people dumb enough to think the devil's bound. That man told me one time, he said, we're in that thousand years and the devil's bound right now. I said, son, if he's bound now, I'd sure hate to be around when he got loose. If you think the devil's bound now, brother, you need to go see a shrink. 
He's loose. The Bible said in 1 Peter 5, He says, a roaring lion walking about, seeking whom he may devour. Amen. And you know what he done? He said, uh, oh, I drink so much. And God said he made it through his trial, didn't he? And the devil said, but yeah, but you, you just touch his body. Touch that old flesh there. Yea, skin for skin. All that a man hath will he give for his flesh. God said, all right, you've got my permission. Go to it. And the devil took off running. He grabbed him by the nap of the neck, jerked him back, said, wait a minute. Don't kill him. Get on out of here. Ain't you glad? To, ain't it a wonderful blessing to know that God can't, uh, the devil can't do nothing to us that God don't give permission to do? Glory to God, that's a blessing, ain't it? Oh, look at old Danny Castle down there. Let me go get him. Let me go get him. I'll kill him. And God says, you just leave him alone, boy. Hold him back. That's right. So if you're going through trials and you're going through a hard time, you ought to, you ought to be uh, shouting a victory. God must have confidence in you or He wouldn't let you go, be going through it. So the Word of God tells us that the devil went. Job woke up one morning and the devil owed him. He woke up one morning, he's itching. That's right. Had something just to irritate and the daylights out of him. He looked up there and there was a rising on his arm. Old scaly, hard, red, irritable ball. And he had hurt so bad that night when he laid down, he couldn't hardly lay over on that arm. And he mashed it and old pus just squirted out of it. That's what it says. Runny sores. Brother, the next morning when he got up, he was on his back and on his neck and in his ears, on his scalp, between his fingers and between his toes and on the bottom of his feet. I mean, he got it, boy. He couldn't sit down. He couldn't lay down. He couldn't roll over. Was in con- oh, nasty, runny, putrefying sores all over his body. The devil said he's going to cuss God. I know he's going to cuss God. I know he's going to cuss God. You know what Job had to do? He didn't go check into the hospital and have them put gauze and Vaseline all over him, wrap him up and lay him in a bed and give him medication. Doesn't have nothing like that. You know what he done? He went out and got him an old piece of sackcloth, an old toe sack, old burlap sack. That's what he put on for his clothes. Can you imagine that? Being irritated like that and hurting so bad and have to put on an old toe sack? Didn't have no gauze. Didn't have no band-aids. Didn't have nothing to spray on. Didn't have anything to help the irritation. He put an old toe sack on him and went out there and there's a big old pile of ashes where they'd burn the trash and Joe just flopped down in that big pile of ashes. And ashes went all over him. He just sat there. And you know the only relief he had? He broke an old potter's vessel and an old piece of a vase there and got an old piece of that old broken vase and just started scraping his arm and scraping that old junk off of it. The Bible said that he took a piece of a pot shirt. That's a piece of pottery. And started scraping the old balls off of him and, and scraping that old junk down his legs and off his back and trying to get him a little relief. The devil said, he's going to cuss God, he's going to cuss God, he's going to cuss God, he's going to cuss God. I know he's going to cuss God now. And about that time, his wife came up. And she looked down at him and boy, was she encouraging. You know what she said? She said, won't you cuss God and die? Boys, I, people get mad at me. They think I'm against women, but if you listen to them, you'll mess up every time. You can say what you want to. You can argue to me that you're blue in the face. You can shoot me that ERA junk all you want to. But I know the Bible's right. And when the pressure's on, a woman usually takes the wrong advice. Now that's because the Bible says she's the weaker vessel. It doesn't mean that she's inferior. It doesn't mean that men's any better than she is. God made one and God made the other in a different way. She said, why don't you just cuss God and die? And the devil said, that'll get him right there. I know he'll cuss God. I know he'll cuss God. And brother, somehow the Lord give old Job extra grace. 
And he mustered up all the faith he could have. And he looked back at his wife. And he said, you talk like a fool, woman. He said, I'll speak as, as a foolish woman. He said, you think I'm crazy? Shall we not receive evil at the hand of God and good only? How come people think that when you live for God, everything's supposed to be good and it's supposed to turn out right? It's supposed to prosper and all of these things. Brother, let me tell you, you're going to get bad just like you get good. Amen. Hard times is going to come just like good times are going to come. Rain comes just like sunshine comes. God will send the evil and also the good. Job stayed faithful even in his boils. Not only that, Job stayed faithful with his buddies. He had some old buddies around during this time. Boy, what buddies they were. They were Bildad and Zophar and Eliphaz, the Temanites. Heard all that had happened to Brother Job. And so they went up to comfort him. The Bible says that they walked up to Job's house and here they come with, you know, their Sunday go to meeting clothes on. Everything ready. Talk about God's blessings. And there said old Job there in the ash heap, scraping himself with an old piece of broke potter's vessel. For seven days, they just stood there and looked at him. See, people didn't get in a hurry back then. I mean, they didn't have nothing else to do. I mean, they didn't have, they didn't have time clocks to punch, TV programs to watch, places to go. They just stood there and looked at him for seven days. And about, one of them, about that time, one of them spoke up and said, uh, they began the conversation. Now these old boys, Job would have probably been a lot better off without them. But he's still faithful even around these buddies. Now you know what they're saying? They were saying like this. They're saying like a lot of Baptists I know. They're saying, look here Job. Now you're bound to have sin in your life. I mean, if you didn't have some kind of sin in your life, all these bad things wouldn't be happening to you. And go ahead and confess up, Job. You're nothing but a hypocrite. You've just been playing games. You're not really right with God. Or all these bad things wouldn't be happening to you. And it's just like a lot of so-called evangelists you hear these days, you know. They try to tell you if you get sick, it means you've sinned. They try to tell you if you, if you do something, uh, if something bad happens to you, that means there's something bad that you've done. Hogwash. The greatest Christians that's ever been in this world, God allowed them to go through terrible sufferings. Now, I believe in chastisement. I believe that God deals and whips and chastens His children. But just because something bad happens to somebody, you can't point your finger and say, well, see there, that's because He did this. Or that's because of that. You ain't do that, folks, because you don't know. They looked at old Job and they said, Job, you bound to have sin in your life. Job about lost his temper with them a time or two and blessed them out. And he said thing, a few things with them that maybe not have been exactly courteous. But under the circumstances, he done mighty well. And at least he stayed faithful to God. You know what they done? They looked at him and said, Job, you're this and you're that. Why don't you go ahead and confess, boy? Why don't you go ahead and admit that you're a sinner? Why don't you tell everybody that you're a wicked man? We're trying to comfort you. And Job said, miserable comforters are y'all. You're physicians of no value. And you know what else they said? They said this and they said that. And they said, now we know this and we know that and we know the other. And Job said, no doubt ye are the people and wisdom shall die with you. <laughs> yeah, yeah ain't, don't you ever know anybody like that? One of these smart aleck know-it-alls comes around and while you're, while you're going through fire and through hell on earth and tries to tell you how to do this and how to do that and you just look at them and say, yeah, I know, you know everything and wisdom will die when you die. No doubt ye are the people. Wisdom shall die with you. But anyway, in all of this, Job sin not. Neither charge God foolishly. Then it went on for about a year like that. Every day, every day, 
Every day Job was bold. He said his, 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 his body wasn't right. His breath was strange to his wife. He said his family was gone. His kids were dead. I don't know what happened to his wife after that. But the rest of the story deals with the three men. Up until about chapter 42, how the three men uh, moved with, or was there with Job and helped Job or tried to help Job and talked to him and all of these things. But Job stayed faithful, went around these buddies. I want to tell you something, folks. We need to make up our mind. In this generation, we are living in a generation of quitters. We're living in a time when nobody finishes anything. Our young people, they go to school. They don't like it, they quit. They start in college. They don't like it, they quit. They start a job. Work two or three months. Don't, something happens, they don't. They just quit. We think that if things don't go exactly right, you just, have to, you just get to quit. But we need some good old stickability and some good old dedication and some good old backbone and some good old grit and some good old bone that even though we may have to walk stony places, and even though we may have to walk through fire, and even though we may be tempted and may be tried, that we still look to Jesus and be faithful unto death. I want you to not be easy all the, way, all the time. Like I read a story about a young girl. She got saved. She didn't know the Lord and she got saved and come to Jesus. And her daddy... It made him very mad. And he said, a young girl like that ain't got no business messing around with religion. Drop it! She said, I'll not drop it. And it wasn't long after that till she began to get at 6 o'clock every morning study the Bible for breakfast. And after about a year of that, her daddy got to noticing that it must be real. Because her daddy said, Good night. Used to, we couldn't drag her out of bed. We had to fuss at her. She would not get up in the morning. And now she gets up 6 o'clock every morning and reads the Bible. There's bound to be something to it. And it made a great influence on her daddy and made a believer in her out of him because of her faithfulness. Now you know what those people are looking for on the job where you work? They've heard all of this talk. They've heard Jesus loves you. They've heard Jesus died on the cross. They've heard and there's a hell. They've heard there's only one way to get there. They've heard all these things. What they are looking for is somebody that will really live it in front of them. That they can have confidence in. You know what's wrong with little Harper Valley, Marion, North Carolina? I tell you what, there's so many hypocrites and people say, well, I know so-and-so and they're a deacon and I know so-and-so and he's a preacher and he ain't got much. If that's all they are to it, I don't want no part of it. And there ain't nobody faithful enough to be an influence on those that are lost. Amen. You know what? Everybody in this church tonight, you ought to make up your mind to be faithful to God every day. I don't say you have to go in your plant tooting your horn hollering I'm a Christian. All you got to do is live right. People will know that you live right. I don't say they're supposed to get up there at the lunch table when all the other kids are praying and when all the other pray and say, oh, never shut up. I'm going to pray. Just bow your head and say your prayer. And ask God to bless your food. You don't have to toot your horn. Just live your life. My day. People will know you love the Lord. I'd like, to, I'd like to be like that old dog I heard about. It's all I am anyway. It's an old Gentile dog. It's all you are too. I'd like to be like that old dog I read about. In Edinburgh, Scotland. A man had a little faithful dog. Brother, that little dog stayed with that man. One day the man died and they buried him in a cemetery there in Edinburgh. And you know what that little dog done? He went and laid on that grave. Laid there one day, two days, three days, four days. Laid there every day. And there was a church bell that rang every day in town. When that church bell would ring, that little dog knew that there was, it was time to eat. And people were eating at the plate. And he went over to a nearby bakery and a man threw him out a pie and some water out there to drink. And he went over there and eat every day. And when he got through eating, he'd go right back over and lay down on his mass grave. And the story went that that little dog laid there for 12 years on that man's grave. 
every day. People would know when they'd look at him as hard as that log, being faithful. When did he quit, preacher? He laid there till he died. I'd like to be like that little dog, wouldn't you? Faithful unto death. Faithful unto death! I don't want to be a wishy washy. Every time this comes along, get washed off this way or washed off that way. I'd like to be faithful unto death. By the help of the Lord, I want everybody in here to be faithful unto death. I like to be like that little dog, brother. I ain't much. And I'm not a Jew, you know. God gave the covenants to the Jews. God gave the writings to the Jews. God gave the law to the Jews. Every writer in this Bible was a Jew. And I can't do those things. I can't write part of God's Word. I'm just a little old dog. But there's one thing I can do, brother. I can follow the Lord around everywhere He goes. And I want to get to the place where every time the Lord looks around, there I stand. I stand at Danny Castle again. And every time the Lord looks around, there I am again. We can be an old faithful, like an old hound dog you can't get rid of. Just be faithful. You know, there's some people, if you don't pat them on the back, stick them behind their ear and give them a little sugar tip before they leave the church, they won't come back. But they some, you can't run them off. Just like an old hound dog. You ever had an old dog you couldn't get rid of and you finally just shoot it? Man, the other day said there's no dog hung around his house. Hung around, he said he hated that dog. Oh, mangy, hairy, nasty dog. And he said he shot that thing 50 times. Didn't kill it. Said he shot him in the stomach one time. The dog just got up and run. And the next time he got him out there, he just pow, 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 pow. And fit him full of holes. Shot him all over. Shot his leg. He said the last time he seen him, his, his front feet was crippled up under him. He's pushing himself off in the weeds like that. Glory, I'd like, I ain't nothing but an old mangy dog. You know it? Old mangy Gentile dog. Raised here in America. Never loved God. Never knew God. Never knew what Jesus done to me. But He saved me. And I belong to Him. I want to be faithful unto death. Just like Job did. I tell you, we don't always know what we might do. I don't and you don't. But we ought to make up our mind to be faithful unto death. And finally tonight in closing, we come all the way back to where we started at. Not only was Job faithful in his blessings, not only was he faithful in his bankruptcy, in his bereavement, in his balls, in his buddies, but the time came when the circle turned. And we see Job again being faithful in his blessings. God blessed him again. The tide turned. God blessed him again. And the Bible said in the last chapter of the book of Job that the Lord blessed the latter end more than the beginning. And that God gave Job twice as much as he had to start with. Now I tell you, you run into a lot of people out here around this county that say this. They say, huh, I lived for God for a while and everything happened to me and nobody was my friend and everything come down on me and I lost my house and everything. I just gave it up. You know what their problem was? They quit too soon. If they'd have stayed in there, God would have blessed them with twice more than they had to start. That's right. For the Bible says... That in the last part of the book of Job, that God gave Job 14,000 sheep where it had 7,000 more. All of a sudden, one day, business began to pick up. And brother old Job's flesh started clearing up. And he said, I do declare, I believe I'm getting better. And brother, he said, I, uh, he went in and told his wife, said, honey, I'm feeling better every day. I'm only out here and farm me a little piece of ground. And he got out there and God blessed his crops and he sold them, bought him some sheep. And brother, he wheeled and dealed there and God blessed him until he had 7,000 sheep. In the meantime, his wife said, well, he must be quite a bit of a man. And she began to love him again. And brother, he began to love her again. And God gave them seven sons and three daughters again. And the Bible said that He gave them 6,000 camels where they only had 3,000 camels to start with. And God gave them 1,000 donkeys where they only had 500 donkeys to start with. God gave them 1,000 yoke of oxen where they only had 500 yoke of oxen to start with. 
Now I know what of you thinking. You're sitting there thinking, how come you give them double sheep, double oxen, double donkeys, and double camels, but he only gave them seven sons and three daughters? How come he didn't give them sons and six daughters? I thought he doubled him. See, there's a lie in the Bible right there. It said God gave him double. He only gave him seven back. Whoa, he, oh, just, just hold your horses just a second. You see, when them camels, them first camels and them sheep and them donkeys, they got, they died and burned up. That's the end of them. They didn't have no soul. They just died and that was it. But them kids had a soul, brother, and they went to heaven. So Job had sin up there and ten down here. Amen? God don't make mistakes. He gave him double his children. He gave him back double what he had before. Seven sons in heaven. Seven sons on earth. Three daughters in heaven. Three daughters on earth. And he gave him back double all his livestock. And Job still stayed faithful in his lessons again. Mine and your job is to not be thou faithful unto death. Now I'll tell you how Job stayed faithful. It wasn't because Job's any stronger than anybody in here. It's because he feared God and his two evil. Now, the only way you're going to hear God in this too evil is read the Word of God, stay away from sin, and begin to read God's Word more and more, pray a lot more, and it'll cause you to hate sin. When you start liking and loving and enjoying sin, look out, you're getting ready to go down. Every Christian, I guess, comes to a point where they enjoy a little sin. They like it. Oh, when that happens, you're getting on dangerous ground. Pray and pray, read and pray and read and stay with God until you hate sin once again. See if God sees it and you can be faithful unto death. Let's stand with our heads bowed. Every head bowed and every eye closed. Would you want to be like the little hound dog tonight and be faithful? I mean, every time them church doors is open, trot through them. Every time visitation, revival, soul winning, anything's going on, you want to be like that little hound dog. Well, ask the pianist to come right quick. Brother John's going to come and get us a song. If God has spoke to your heart tonight about being faithful to Him, you might want to just come to this altar and say, Oh God, I'm going to lay right in there by the help of God. I'm going to do what you want me to do. Come and pray. Ask God for the extra strength that you need. The Lord will give it to our Father. We pray in Jesus' name that you'd help every one of us to be faithful even unto death. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's